Hi everyone, welcome back. Today's video will be about acidic negatively charged amino acid. This group contains two of the 20 amino acids. They include aspartic acid or aspartate if it's deprotonated and glutamic acid or glutamate if it's deprotonated. In normal physiological conditions, both would be deprotonated since they are acids. This is what gives each of these amino acids a net negative charge, making them negatively charged. The acronym I use to remember these two amino acids is D, as in D-E, or ED. To be honest, I prefer ED, and it's because it reminds me of Ed Sheeran and how his album covers tend to have math symbols on them and therefore relating to the negatively charged amino acids but you can use whatever acronym that you would prefer. Similar to asparagin and glutamine, the structures of aspartate and glutamate are easy to remember. In fact, the way they differ is exactly the same. The R group of aspartate contains a carbon atom attached to a carboxylate. As a refresher, a carboxylate is a carbon atom double bonded to a oxygen atom and single bonded to a oxygen that has already lost its hydrogen atom. So it's a C double O minus group. A carboxylate is basically a deprotonated version of a carboxylic acid. The structure of glutamate is exactly the same with two carbon atoms between the alpha carbon and the carboxylate as opposed to one carbon like in aspartate. This is the same difference you see between asparagine and glutamine. Now, this could be a little confusing because both kind of sound the same and the difference is the same as well. So if you think you might get confused, remember this. Asparagine and glutamine both end with in and therefore contains an N at the end of their name. These are the ones that contain the amide, which also contains a nitrogen atom, which is an N. I hope that little trick would help you to minimize the confusion. Before I end the video, here are some tips for you to remember the amino acids better. Make an acronym or a phrase to remember the amino acids for each group. If you're making an acronym, Consider using the single letter abbreviations to minimize confusion on exam day. If you are producing a phrase, make sure that the first letter of the word in these phrases refer to the single letter abbreviations to minimize confusion as well. Try to make acronyms or phrases that are personal to you, funny, and are wild. This helps you to remember them better. And lastly, Use the acronyms and phrases often to make sure that you remember them. I used to play this amino acid matching game for a few minutes every day to make sure they were fresh in my mind. I'll include a link to that game in the description section below in case any of you want to try that out too. That's it for this video. I hope this was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to subscribe as that helps the channel out a lot. Click the video on the left hand side to learn about the next class of amino acids. If you want to learn about all the 20 amino acids at the same time, please click the video on the right. See you next time. Bye!